Welcome to the Harpoon Business Podcast. The man that you see before you, you know me, Vern and Keith, but this other man that you see before you is a legend out of Houston, Texas. Uh, he is the BNI heavyweight champion of the world. <laughs> <laughs> He's the owner of Pest Arrest out of Houston, John John Santos. Man, man, I really appreciate you being on with us, brother. Welcome, welcome. Hey, awesome. Hey, I appreciate the invite. Uh, this is, yeah. This is actually, believe it or not, my first podcast. So this is all a, a new thing for me. So let's see how it goes. Man. We'll be gentle. I, uh, I did, <laughs> I appreciate I did a, a, a one by myself earlier this week. But I, I just wanted you to be the first one, man. Um, <clears throat> because... Uh, you know, I was telling Keith, I, I talk about you all the time to Keith, but um you you you're my you're you're my mentor, you know what I mean? Yeah, you yeah. showed me so much, me and Quincy. And uh, you know, but not only that, man, like we went down there, I, you a friend, you know, we became mm -hmm. friends and met Absolutely. in Atlanta. Yeah, we met yeah, in Atlanta yeah. and uh I, I mean you just never know who you're gonna gravitate towards. Yeah, that's exactly. I know, I mean you're way up there north. I'm way down here south, and we meet in Atlanta. That's right. that's, <laughs> that's right, man. And then and then that also the importance of going to events, you know. Absolutely. Hey, and I I told you, Keith. Uh, John met the Goins. Uh, yes. The Goins family. Uh, Hawaii. In Hawaii. In Hawaii. Wow. <laughs> I seen the picture yeah, on. Yeah. I was like, yo, this is crazy. You know. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, an awesome man. couple. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, you know, they, 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 they. I was walking into the convention center and I'm watching them and they're, they're doing this little shenanigans, you know, in front of the, the sign. I look over to my wife. I said, I need to go meet them over there. <laughs> That's what I, did. I, I walked over and I told them, yo, I got I got to meet you guys. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah. They're really nice people. Funny. So, yeah, that's fun. But that that is the importance of of getting being involved. Right, getting being involved in, in, in everything, uh, your local uh, pest control associations. You know, a lot of people are like, well, why, you know, why, why do you do that? You know, why do you network? Why do you, you know, because you get out of that box and you get to meet other people that you don't know who you're going to meet and how they can help you. And, and 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 it's all about you know getting your name out there. You mm -hmm. know. And one day you're going to meet that one person that's going to help you just boom. Yeah. So that's that's why you do it. You just you go out there. Not only do you promote your business, but it's all about getting information. Not necessarily, you know, just getting information from people in your industry. They've right. been around a long time. And, and that's, you know, that's, that's what we do. I don't even know if I've ever asked you this, John, but going back, what... Um... Cause out of high school, did you know you was doing? Did you do pest control out of high school? No, man, I'm a product of McDonald's. <laughs> I, I tell you what, you you laugh, but I worked for McDonald's and mm -hmm. I went into their program. And I mean, I went to Hamburger University. People don't even know that really exists. Wow! But they are serious about their management. If, and you take out of it what you can, right? So, so with that being said, I got transferred from Jersey to Houston through McDonald's, and um, and then in Houston, you know, things happen and whatever. I wound up working for another company, and in working with that other company, Godfather's Pizza, um, I met my pest control guy, and my pest control guy, he's come in three, four times a week. And every time it was like, you need to come work for us, man. You'd be a, a good sales guy. We see how you turn your, your restaurants around. You can do that. You know, you'd be a great pet. And he did that for years. And one day he just caught me on, on one of those days that I was ready. Yeah. And and I, I wound up going, taking a two-week vacation, going out with his boss. And after the fourth day, I was, I was ready. I was ready to get into pest control. And that's how it happened, man. And I did that for a couple of years and then got laid off. And I was like, okay, now what? Right. Neighbor of mine said, start your own business. Wow. And that's that's what I did, man. Knocked on doors 
for nine dollars and ninety nine cents while I'm standing in front of you. I'll do you pest control wow. for nine dollars and ninety nine cents. And uh, and I did that. And here we go. That was March 15th, 1995. Wow. So that's before. You know, there's all this SEO and all this. Oh, stuff. yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, that was before. That was postcards. That's the way I, I used to do it. I write your name on a postcard with your address and what I did and how much I charged. And I kept it in a, in a little index box. And then I had, to, I had 12 months in the index box. So I take, I do my January work. And when I got done with all my January work, I moved it to April. The whole, all the index box the cards went into April. And that's, how, that was, that was my field route, you know? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and then I take February and I put it back to me. I mean, it was, yeah. And that's how I did it. It was just, you know, from there, I gradually, you know, got into, you know, computers. Uh, actually, my, my neighbor's kid, uh, she was 15 years old. Her name was Erica. Her name is Erica. And uh, she's like, yeah, you know about Excel? And I was like, nope, I don't. And she set up Excel and this and that. And, and that's when it just started, you know, going into, into uh, uh, you know, at least getting the proper reminders, you know, and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Did anybody teach you sales? Because you, one thing about you, man, even riding around when I was with you <laughs> in that big truck you got, you know, yeah. you know Keith, everybody in Houston got big cars, you know. Wow. I mean? got big truck. Everything's bigger in Texas. <laughs> yeah, everything's bigger in Texas, man. But, like, yeah. the sales part, like, he was knocking on doors, so you just always had a knack for sales. Yeah, you know, I, everybody describes me as a people person. Everybody that meets me, everybody that knows me. I just, you know, I like talking to people. That's why I DJ. You know, I like interaction with people. And and when I was in, in <laughs> when I was in college, I, I made a living selling Kirby vacuum cleaners. Oh, I still got mine. Yeah, that's the best <laughs> vacuum around, right? Yeah. So, so I learned through Kirby. Uh, you know, how to approach, you know, you go out with these crews, they, take, they put four or five guys in a van, they go to a neighborhood and, and the van is full of fruit baskets, you know, and you knock on a door and the person opens the door and you shove a fruit basket in their face and you do your spiel in 10 seconds because that's all you have, you know, and, and that's that's kind of where I, where I got that, you know, uh, not being afraid to, to knock on a door, not being afraid to talk to a stranger. You know, and, and it just, you know, I just applied that, you know, with with pest control, you know, yeah. because back in 1995, they weren't they really weren't door knockers doing pest control door knocking. You know, right. I mean, um, uh, it wasn't a craze like it is the last 10 years. Right. Right. Um, so so I just winged it. I mean, I you know, I just I literally took things that I. That I learned and 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 phrases I learned selling selling vacuum cleaners and just put pest control in it, you know. Yeah. And um and then you kind of figure out what works, what didn't work. Oh, I took too long. Oh, they they stole my fruit basket, <laughs> you know, <laughs> whatever. And uh, and you just make it work. So, and Keith, you can jump in at any time. I, I want to ask you. So, like, you're kind of my first mentor. It's like. How Coleman, when I was listening to his podcast, mm -hmm. he was kind of the first podcast that just it spoke to me, which is why we met in Atlanta, you know? Right. Um, because I, I as soon as I bought the tickets, Hal called me up and was like, Hey man, yeah. look forward to seeing you, you know. So that exactly that, that interaction was awesome. Did you have a mentor? Have, did you ever have a mentor? Not not really in pest control, like I said, I just took you know, my past experiences and, and, and brought it in, you know, uh, to, to what I, what I do. Um, and then of course you, 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 you get hungry for, for more as you're growing. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and you start meeting people in, in associations and things like that, um, and seeing what they're doing. And then, and then you meet your house, right. And you, and your Victor Antonio's man, that guy is, yeah. is you know, that guy's rock, you know, um, a lot of a lot of what we do is is uh, is you know things that he that I've learned through his program, 
So, so I, not a mentor, but there, you know, there are people that I that I follow even today. I sit in my car and I've listened to you know Victor's podcasts and stuff a thousand times. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, sometimes I even have his mannerisms, you know, because yeah, I see him so much, right? Yeah, yeah. But you know, think that, that's how that's that's what I do, and that's what I push my guys to do. You know, yeah, uh, is to. Yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, man, this is good stuff, John. I, <laughs> I love hearing the story. Um, the one thing, um, and I'm transitioning from sales management into a owner's position. Um, how involved are you in your business on the on with the day to day operations? So, you got to be. Um, you know, the saying is. You want to work in your business, not on your business, right? That's the only way you can grow. Um, so, so you're in it. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I contact my office staff all the time uh, on a daily. I see where we're at. You know, I look at my numbers and I'll, and I'll, you know, send a text out and I'll be, you know, I'll say, hey, you know, we, we need to do this today. I'll pull one of my three people in the office and go, this is what you're doing today. I don't want you doing nothing else but this. And um, uh, so I'm real involved with my technicians. You know, every week we meet, we do, you know, we do training every week. Um, uh, every two months, I'll, I'll bring someone in. Um, I'll bring someone in from the outside, um, uh, BASF or Xterra or just your local guys to, to do some training with my guys. Um, uh, so yeah, it, it, I'm, I, I'm really involved with, with, with the team because I feel that if they see that you're out there and, and, and you're with them, I mean, I'm a, I go out in the field, you know, uh, and visit them at, at job sites. I'll be in an inspection and I'll look, I'll look at my, at my application and see what technician is near me and I'll swing on by and say, Hey, how's it going? You know, and, um, uh, watch them work. I'll sit three or four houses down and watch them work. Yeah. Uh, and then I'll, I'll, I'll approach them and, and I'll let them know, Hey, and they always say, Oh, I seen you down there. I seen you down there. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. But you, that's what you gotta do, right? You gotta be, you gotta be involved. If you just sure. in the office or, or, you know, just, just they see that you're not around, then then it can get out of control. One of the things that I noticed with you, man, that that's really, really, um, I gotta tell you, it's, it's inspiring. And, and me and Quincy used to talk about it all the time. So, so Keith, we went down there, um, just just experience because John's doing John's business. For those who's listening, John's business is doing very well. He's doing, he's doing good things. And, um, but the one thing that was really, really, that, that just was amazing was the whole, the entire time he was there, Keith, the man phone never rung. Like we driving, <laughs> he driving us around. We, we going here, going there, you know, Houston is a beautiful. I mean, you see all the time, but Houston is a beautiful place, man. Like everything, the, the sky's bigger. Everything's bigger. Yeah. So John, we driving around, going to the malls and stuff, and the man phone never runs. Now, meanwhile, my CSR, she calling every five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and and just talk, can you talk about real quick the, the importance of good organization? Because your stuff is very, very organized. Not like you're not just good at sales, but you're really good at organization. And also, how big of a role? Does your wife help you with that? Because my wife is also in my business. You know what I mean? Hey, without my wife, it wouldn't flow, right? Because, you know, she she's the back end, right? I, I'm the face because she's not into this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But my wife, she 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 works, she makes sure bills get paid. She makes sure we're up to you know, payroll with this and that. And she also makes sure that I you know things happen, and you and you just want to, you just want to. Yeah. And she she's the one that said, "Hey, you know, hey, 
Yeah, <laughs> and keeps it and keeps it keeps it down there, right? Yeah. So yeah, no, she she has a big role, and I and I always I always bother. I mess around with all. I, I I'll, I'll be like, what, what you doing? What, what you got going on today? Are you gonna work? <laughs> and she gives me that look, like yeah, whatever. <laughs> but the, the, it's the the little things that they do in the background that that really really is what makes things go, you know. So. So yeah, she's she's she um she's in it. She's in it. She's in it. She likes her Louis Vuittons and stuff. That's what I say. Oh, her dad. <laughs> he they I mean they was talking yeah. about when we was there, they talked about name brands. I, I ain't been in the store, brother. <laughs> they talking about name brands. I mm. Listen, I ain't yeah. never did so much ballet parking in my life. Was, I was like, man, this is nice, man. We ain't got too much yeah. walking. Oh my goodness, this is yeah. awesome, man. Man. So in our business, we're we're at a level right now where we're looking to scale, where we want to grow. Right. Um, any advice as far as scaling your business? Um, what do you do to grow your business? So, well, it's got to start with with your crew, right? Um, first, training. Make sure you're always training, training, training. Make you, make sure that. Your company has some type of, of protocol, um, and, I, and I'm not talking about going out there and training your technicians to say, "Okay, this is how you spider brush. This is what you do. That's what you do." It's got to be written down, okay? Um, uh, because if it's not, then you you didn't say that. You didn't say it, okay? But if you say if you have it written down as you're saying it, and 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 my guys. They have they have a little a, a little manual, if you may, that that we've created that tells them what to do, when to do it, how to do it. And, and I'm talking about from the moment that they get out of their truck to mixing their chemical. You know, it, the 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 book tells them on an initial start, you're going to use 30 grams of you know alpine with one gallon of water with two ounces of teco. And you're going to treat, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's detailed, you know, that yields a thousand square feet, which is a 10 foot by 100 foot band, blah, 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 blah. That way they can't tell you. Same with your office staff. There's got to be a protocol. It's got to be steps that you want them to say and you make them accountable for that. Does it work all the time? No, because. You always have your guy that comes in that thinks he knows more than you do, right? Mm -hmm. Until you until you prove them wrong because they fail. Mm -hmm. And you let them know, look, if you do it this way, look at my numbers. Look at your numbers. Mm -hmm. Because this is the way I'm doing it. This is the way I, I'm showing you guys to do it. And if you do it that way, you're not going to be here. We're all going to be here, right? Yeah. So that that's really the trick um, is to try to get your people – um, uh, to understand, hey, this is why we do it. And, and, and I tell my guys, this is my analogy all the time because I'm a McDonald's guy. And I just say, two all beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, onions, pickles, and a sesame seed bun. Vern laughing because he's heard it. He's heard it, right? What does that mean? That means that's how McDonald's wants their Big Mac done. And it don't matter if you go to China if you go to Europe, wherever you go and you order a Big Mac, it's going to have two all beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, onions, pickles on a sesame seed bun. Well, that's how I try to, to, to build my business. Doesn't matter if I go to your house to do a service or any other technician goes to your house to do a service. It's going to be two all beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions. You see what I'm saying? So that's what you want to try to do is, is, is try to structure it so that everybody's doing what everybody's doing. It's all the same. He called it processes, Keith. Like Process. he said, yeah. one, and this is gold stuff. For, so if you're trying to start a business, he said, and I and that is stuck with me. The process from the time they call the office has to be the same process that leads all the way down to when the technician does the house. Everybody got to be on the same page. You know, if, right. the, if the CSR tell the customer what's going to be done, the technician did exactly that. Nice. Right. It's, a, it's a streamlined process. 
-hmm. And man, it gets you good reviews. It's 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 no it's no communication issues. It works. It right, works. right. And, and and the trick uh, on the process uh, as you're training your people, and you know when you train somebody, they 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 listen and they and they follow what you say, right, or, or what you do. Mm -hmm. but they don't follow what you say. Mm -hmm. And with me, I interrupt them, boom, and I make them start over. Because if I'm teaching you to say something a certain particular way, that's the way you need to say it. Well, why is that? Right. Egotistic. It's not that. It's because the way I'm teaching you to say something, there's trigger words in that phrase nice. that are important. OK, mm -hmm. they're important. So if you're saying it the way you hear it or the way you want to say it, that don't work for me because that's not what I'm trying to show you. I'm trying to show you to all beef patties, right? All that good stuff. But if you want to put the pickle, the onions before the pickles, even though the sandwich ends up the same way, it don't work because it don't flow. To all beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, onions, pickles, other sesame seed bun sounds so good, right? You don't yes. want to, you, you know, you don't want to change that, okay? So, so it's important that you that you, as you train, you train specifically a certain way. You state, you structure things. You know, your your your, your phone scripts, they're structured a certain way because again, there's trigger words to help people move to the next level, nice. move to, to giving you the work, right? So, so that's, again, that's, that's, that's one of those things that, that people don't think about uh, is, is why am I saying it this way? Well, because that's the way I've learned through the Victor Antonio's and so forth is, is you structure things so that it gets people to think yeah. Of what you're saying, um, and, and, and those words help them move it along. Yeah. Wow. Golden. That's gold stuff yeah. right there, Keith. That yeah. is. That the last is. thing I got, man. Um, one thing that you do that I I, I said, man, this guy, man, always sending pictures on Facebook with his feet in the sand. You know what <laughs> I mean? And this guy's like a world traveler, you know what <laughs> I mean? Nice. I love my vacations. <laughs> Talk about the importance of that, John. Like, um, because you work so hard, right? Right. And, and you're doing so well. Talk about why you travel so much and what that does for you. And that's that's the last subject I got. So decompression, right? Uh resetting, all those things. It's like in my office, <clears throat> you have to take an hour lunch. No if and a buts. You got, the, I don't care if you go to your car and sit there. I don't care if you drive up to the strip center. You got to decompress. You can't stay in the office. You can't stay in your chair because that doesn't help you. It doesn't help you decompress and, and, and get away from it. You know, I, I got this guy that works for me and, and we get together. We, we, you know, we go out on, on, on the boat or we go to a ball game. And he always tries to slip in. Hey, I had a customer blank. And I look at him. I just give him a look. And he goes, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I don't want to hear about work. You know, sometimes my, my, my darling wife, my beautiful darling wife, she'll do that too. We'll be sitting watching TV or whatever. And out of the blue, she'll go, oh, and by the way, <laughs> I'll look at him like, uh, no. <laughs> this ain't. You, you got to have it. So that's why we, we do the, you know, we get the vacations and just get away. Decompress. Don't think about, you know, anything. Think about your feet in the sand, that adult beverage in your hand, and listen to the waves. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. yeah. You got a final thing, Keith? I do. Uh, one last question for me, John, and, and this was yeah. huge uh, uh, for you to, to give us your time, but with a successful business, uh, beautiful family, um, is there an exit strategy for pest arrest? You know, yeah, I um, uh, I want to grow 
um, to so that when I'm 60, 65, um, you know, my wife says, oh, we need to sell, we need to sell. I just think that um, it's got to be a legacy for the family. I think that somewhere, somehow, you know, maybe my grandson, who's six years old um, and already likes bugs, he's out, he lives out in the country, he ain't afraid of snakes, he ain't afraid of nothing. Nice. So, so, so we're hoping that 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 happens and if it doesn't then then yeah you, you look for somebody that that you can trust that's gonna you know have your same ideals and and, and then you step back you know um can i totally step back probably not um you know i'm thinking that uh, I, I, I my future is probably going to be in consulting you know and and talking with folks uh and helping them uh, with their with, with their pest control business and and doing training and so on and so forth, uh, I think I'd be good at that. My wife thinks I'd be good at that. Yeah. So so, uh, pesterous. I wanted to 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 be around forever, right? But if that doesn't happen and, and we do sell, um, uh, I don't see myself out of pest control. Um, uh, I'm definitely still going to be in it because I love it. I, I love taking care of people's problems, coming up with the answers, and then then thanking you. I've got customers from from you know I call, from day one that are still with me. Okay. I I have I've seen their kids grow up. I've seen their kids get married. I service their kids. And now guess what? I'm serving their kids kids. Nice. Yeah and that's beautiful. I that love is. it. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that's why I, I do this. You know, I, you know, you, you make people's environment safe, you know, and, and nothing better than going to a house that's full of German roaches and you're there from step one and you walk them through it. And by your third or fourth visit, you know, you're, you're accepting their cup of water. Right. And they're right. inviting you to barbecues and they're telling, you know, their people at church, hey, this guy's a good guy. And that's that's the best feeling. That is. That's why I do it. Yeah. So, nice. yeah. that's awesome. Well, I tell you, man, um, you definitely consulting is. I can see it. Um, you've helped me on a number of things, and um, you know, I, I, I at first I was like, man, this guy's just giving me diamonds. You know what I mean? But I, I you know, it's like what the Bible talk about. There's more happiness in giving than receiving. Like, Absolutely. so I know. You give, your giving uh, makes you feel good because when I try to help yeah. others, it makes me feel good. But I really appreciate you, man. Um, not just being on this podcast, but you know, we met go and just staying in touch, man. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm, hey, Keith, I'm hard on him too. <laughs> I do, I do the same thing with him. I ask him a question, and. He knows the answer, but he ain't saying the answer the way it needs to be said. I just keep looking at him like, no, nope. <laughs> start over. <That's> <laughs> Vern, look at me. And I'm like, nope, start over. Start over. Start over. Yes. Yeah. And yes. that's the way that's, hey, man, you got to tell me what I don't want to hear in order for right. me to be successful. So, right. man, we really appreciate you, man, for that's taking this right. time out. Man, man. I appreciate you guys for inviting me. And like I said, you, you got my number. Keep yeah. If you yeah. if you don't have my number on your phone, put it in there. Feel free yes, to sir. call. And yes, I, sir. And, I, and I'm on. I'm be booking them Houston tickets, man. All right, man. I'm waiting you know, for you. It's too cold here. Don't come here, John. I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> All we got is a Liberty Bell. We ain't got nothing else. Yeah. We got this. We'll see you. We'll see you again. Well, <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> no. We All right, man. Well, you guys have a blessed week. And, huh? uh, again. I said, you guys have a blessed week. And again, I am, I'm open 24-7. Thanks, John. All right. uh, for those who um, want to know more about John, we're going to have some stuff in the comments. Um, we hope that, uh, you know, you can you can reach out to him. He's, he's a, yeah, he's a great, great um, resource. Input. Yeah, he's, he's a great resource. Yeah. Man. Thanks again, John. All right, man. See you guys. All right.